spurred to run by a situation shared, I think, in the departments which are particularly relevant to me, but which are clearly, or which are unfortunately widespread among a lot of departments on campus, which is that it's difficult for students to complete the majors they want to complete. So especially in neuroscience and psychology and biology, um, due to a confluence of professors being on leave or on sabbatical, um, an influx of majors into these departments, which I think is partly due to um, a, a changing distribution of interest among students, not just towards the sciences, but towards uh, very uh, selected departments on campus. Mm -hmm. um, you see choke point courses in, in many different majors, like movement for actors in drama, or uh, research methods in physiological psychology, or, or, um, or whatever, where majors actually can't complete their course requirements before they graduate because there's more majors than there are spots in these choke point courses every year. So that um, convinced me that something needed to be done on the student's part, because I know faculty and administrators are aware of the problem, but they don't have the motivation to change it because to them, an obvious solution is that a student can switch majors. Um, so this, the solution to the problem has to come, I think, more from us than from them, because even though they have the regulatory power in that area, we have the ability to provide a solution, which they might not. If I can succeed by direct intervention and browbeating if necessary in stabilizing an active majors um, committee in each department on this campus, then there's an organizational link between this position and the academics committee and the student reps on the Committee for Curricular Policy, which is um, the primary way that VP for Academics sort of interacts with the faculty at large, um, that would let me not need to circulate obnoxious surveys in order to pull student opinion. And it would give departments a link to one another by means of both sort of an organizational body composed of committee chairs, but as well as just sharing this structure uh, between them. So you could have, for example, interest mailing lists for departments rather than just being in the department or not, and like being a declared major or not. Um, and it would make it much easier to have the students say, this is what we're interested in and this is what we need. Um, and I think that lets you address a whole range of problems like the peer advising network, which we have and which is great and which is functional, but which no one knows about, especially incoming freshmen. If you have major committees, then there's someone even outside of, for example, major fairs, that a freshman can go to and can find on every website ever and say, help, what am I looking at here, what do I do? And the committee chair or some member of the committee says, oh, let me point you to these resources. Um, and it, it just, I think, would stabilize, or rather would create a framework that we don't have right now for crosstalk and for communication between the people that matter in this, in this conversation. I think there's sort of two sides to that question. Um, and the first is that I haven't spent a lot of time in DSA. Um, in some ways, that's my primary qualification in that I've been sitting in on council meetings and on academic committee meetings. And what I find is that there's a lot of institutional momentum or lack of momentum surrounding issues like lab credits or student seminars, even to a certain extent, where getting things done is more about challenging people's expectations about where you're coming from than it is about going through the accepted channels. So a committee is a great organizational tool, but because of its bureaucratic nature, it's sort of a poor tool for actually um, addressing elements of, of, a, of a pre existing system that really need to be removed or changed or thought about in a totally new way. So I think what I'm bringing to this position is the perspective of somebody who hasn't been in the DSA but who has been a student in a lot of different departments and who talks to students in a lot of different departments and more than that who cares about getting something done more than about being in and participating in the DSA structures that exist right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I intend to be more active in academic realms than in student government realms. Um, so, so, and then just quickly to address the other side of the question, I've been active in various campus organizations. I've taken courses in, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen departments. Um, and I have solved, in a, in a localized sense, this larger problem that I'm talking about. So when I was a sophomore, um, 
as a neuroscience and cognitive science double major, I ran into this problem where neuroscience majors can't get through the requirements for the major. Mm -hmm. And by talking to various deans, including um, Don Jeanette, the dean of the faculty, and dean of strategic planning and academic resources, as well as all of the involved faculty and the students, I got eight more students into the class, um, got the two professors teaching it, the, the relevant courses, neuroscience do one, but um, to, to accept these students and to subsequent to that semester, stop co-teaching it. It's no longer a co-taught course. And then there's two sections and more students can take it. And it's, it's eased up some of the pressure in that department, but not uh, removed the problem. So I think that that experience hasn't given me the, the tools that I need to do this job, but it's shown that I understand. And I think it's an illustration uh, uh, of my understanding of the problem and um, the efficacy of my approach. And again, part of the answer to that is going to be major committees. Okay. Um, if they're running and if they're active, then it's going to be really easy for somebody to get in touch with me and with the academic committee just by going to them, because that's going to be um, sort of a, a, a corporate framework in the sense that they're going to be part of the same body, literally. Um, but also, I spend a lot of time hanging out in academic buildings. Um, I'm very talkative. It's easy to get, get a hold of me. Um, and even though being on VSA exec means spending a lot of time in committee meetings and exec in academics, in the committee for curricular policy, and meeting with the dean and so on, that's only a, a small part of the week. And I'll be sharing space and sharing discussion time with um, house presidents and with org presidents and with anybody who's involved in academics. Um, I've actually already had really excellent conversations with several people who had particular issues they want me to address for next year, and that's change changed my thinking significantly. For example, uh, a student raised the idea of having introductory courses in physics and chemistry, similar to Bio 105. So there's no lab requirement, so a humanities major could come in and, you know, get an introduction to the field of chemistry and what's going on in that right now um, without taking the first steps towards that major or whatever. And I think that's a really phenomenal idea, and I think it's something we can totally accomplish if, if I can just find a faculty member who's willing to take that on. I think VP for Academics is primarily meant to function as a, an expression of the frustrations of the student body. Um, and that sounds almost coy, but as, as, a, a, as a member of the faculty or of the administration, and you're sitting, sitting on the Committee for Curricular Policy, you have your own concerns. And you have a whole history of departmental squabbles, and you know the issues. You've been doing this for years. Um, and so a lot of questions have become non-issues from that perspective. Like, for example, lab credits, because you know that's been rehashed so many times, it's, it's become like a, a taboo word. But, and, and so the role of the VP for academics is to come in and say, no, it's not. That's not a taboo topic. We need to address that. Because even though you're, you're sick of it and you're fed up with it, you have 2,400 students who have something to say. And what they're telling you is you need to do something about lab credits.